So 16 Soberanas. So as you remember, 12 was my first year and every year has been just a little bit of, uh, of uh, fine tuning what I want to uh, do with the, uh, with the wine. And uh, uh, San Lucia Highlands is an area where it's cooler climate and it doesn't really get hot. It's, uh, it's cooler than, uh, than Carneros, mm -hmm. but it's sunny. Mm -hmm. And there's something about that intensity of, uh, of the sun, and that's probably why it's so, it's so good for, uh, for, uh, for as, as farmland, mm -hmm. that it gets, uh, it gets good sun and it really, uh, it really ripens. But you can't back it up anything scientifically, but there's just something there about the sunshine ripens faster than it does uh, here, and what even, about, though, even though the temperatures are not uh, as high. And then what about the wind? It's really windy there. It is really windy. Mm -hmm. And um, if interesting, where the, so this is owned the farm by the uh, Pizzonis and they actually have to tie uh, shoots to the, uh, to the wires. Mm -hmm. Otherwise uh, everything just ends up with the wind, just ends up being just swept uh, side to side or just gets shoved to one side. So in order to keep the canopy up, keep uh, canes from breaking, uh, clusters from being, uh, from being damaged, mm -hmm. they actually tie, tie mm -hmm. shoots. Yeah. How are you able to hang on to the Chardonnay and release the 16 vintage now, about two and a half years after harvest? Most people can't afford to do that. How do you manage? Okay, I probably can't afford to do it either. So <laughs> ask my wife, like, what? <laughs> but it's important for well, the Well, this isn't, isn't, uh, this isn't uh, um, I'm paying the bills at the end of the month. So mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna be leaving my, my, uh, my day job. I think stylistically, for the wine to be able to have the extended time uh, in barrel and then the uh, the time in uh, in bottle also for for it to show well, mm -hmm. I think right now it is uh, is drinking really well. Mm -hmm. I think it's got a long window also. Mm -hmm. uh, the freshness, the the, the texture should, should keep it going for a really long time. Yeah, your wines will definitely improve after they've been released, but it seems over the years uh, to me that you find it particularly important for them to be in a really drinkable place when you mm -hmm. release them. Absolutely, I think when they're when folks are first trying them, it's really nice to have that uh, that drink me now. Wow, uh, a factor, which I think this uh, this does. And even in the short time, start out really cold, and as it's warming up and opening up, mm -hmm. I think you're, you're just getting a lot more uh, uh, complexity to it in depth. So, yeah. um, but I think the uh, the. Uh, um, the highlight that really sticks out for me is, is that acidity. Mm -hmm. Even as it's warming up, I think it stays really uh, uh, nice uh, throughout mm -hmm. putting hairs. How would you compare the uh, 16 Soberana Chardonnay that we're having to previous vintages, stylistically? Uh, so um, that fine tuning year to year, and also it's always been barrel fermented, the Malolactic has always been 100%, and it's always been a mix of uh, several uh, selections. Mm -hmm. uh, a pain in the butt for uh, for Mark Pizzoni and the picking crew to do, but uh, um, fortunately he uh, uh, he does it for me. So even though we're, I'm only getting three bins, he picks from each of the different uh, selections. So there's two different Wente selections. Um, there is um, uh, some Mon Rocher, and there is uh, actually three different Wentes, and the Mon Rocher is four different selections. So the block is divided up into several different parts. Each one ripens a little bit different. And uh, those are doggy treats for Moxie. Moxie! Come here, girl. Sorry about that. No, no worries. Was that? No, no, I think that's water. Okay. I think. <laughs> <laughs> or why? Maybe I spilled it. So it has the same hue as the uh, Chardonnay does. Picking a little bit. Uh, a little bit riper, but not by uh, uh, not by much. Looking at uh, at the different uh, uh, selections mm -hmm. and uh, knowing that once they're actually harvested and pressed, uh, the pH is going to go up a little bit, and sugars and the sugar blending will be uh, uh, will be probably just a little bit higher than that last uh, sample. Mm -hmm. The oak has changed uh, as well, still about twenty five to thirty three percent new over over the time, mm -hmm. but it's been. Um, Really fine tuned now to uh, the last couple of years has been uh, Sirug uh, uh, barrel. Okay. And the Sirug barrel is just a little bit, um, 
um, less intense. It really um, is, lets the uh, the uh, the fruit and the aromas really come through, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really show off. It's really toasty and uh, and oaky. And it's still a little bit on the cold side, but how much is new? This saw uh, twenty five percent new. Really nice lemon bar, light caramel, great acidity. It's big in the mouth, but the acidity is really high and so it balances it all up. A good yin yang of richness and tanginess. I always hate to say it's my favorite one yet, but it's probably my favorite one yet. <laughs> you say that every year. I know I do. And I'll keep on saying it. So this is the 16 Numina Pinot Noir. It's an up coast. So, so this is in a, the closest town? Uh, Sebastopol. Sebastopol. So this is Sebastopol. If uh, if and when Sebastopol Hills ABA gets approved, this would be in the Sebastopol Hills area. Uh -huh. It's uh, near uh, near Kanzler Vineyard, uh, kind of on the way to uh, uh, Little Rise Estate, uh, Boleto and Boleto Vineyards are in the area. Mm -hmm. And Boleto is actually one of the uh, pioneers in the area. David Mino bought the property in 1986. Mm -hmm. no, uh, no wine grapes and there weren't any in, in the neighborhood. And he told me that uh, <clears throat> they thought it was too cold. And it was when uh, Boleto was the first one to plant in the, in the neighborhood and when their, their wine grapes uh, ripened, mm -hmm. and it was like, aha, uh -huh. and then he started, started spreading. Mm -hmm. Still, it seems there's more or as many apples as there are uh, wine grapes, mm -hmm. but that uh, that area is just kind of a, a nice uh, balance of, uh, of both. Um, you know, there is a soy element to this wine. It's, uh, okay. Pretty noticeable um, on the back end, so black licorice, kind of black olive, mm -hmm. a little truffle as well. Do you get that? I do. I noticed right <laughs> You're away. Me like what? <laughs> No, that, that was a good uh, transition. Yeah, I noticed that also since we opened the wine, really aromatic and just a lot of really uh, nice earthy uh, uh, flavors to uh, and uh, aromas to really balance uh, uh, that fruit. Mm -hmm. So half whole cluster because I like that uh, that component. I think it really brings it out. Uh, there's a, there's a spiciness to it. The tannins are, uh, are are soft, but I think there's some nice length and still some good grip to it. Mm -hmm. And I think the whole cluster contributes to that. Mm -hmm. The uh, acidity also, because of the area, it's, uh, it's cooler. It keeps a nice brightness to it uh, as well. So it keeps it from being a little bit uh, uh, flabby at all. Always the acidity. Yeah, so it's always uh, a nice uh, uh, dimension to, to have. Mm -hmm. But I was really impressed with the aromatics and where they are. Really nice uh, uh, pull from the fruit, uh, dark fruit, red fruit, and lots of spice and, uh, and, uh, and earth. What's your number one noticeable fruit in this? For me, uh, I think there's some telltale Sonoma Coast, there's some blood orange, pomegranate, mm -hmm. uh, some notes of, uh, of like Campari, and mm -hmm. I think that kind of ties Campari. in the, uh, the earth as well. Campari always, always mm -hmm. has the, uh, the red fruit, yeah. but that, uh, that almost like licorice, uh, a peri aperitif, uh, herby mm -hmm. um, licorice note is there. If you had to pick one fruit, just one. It's uh, totally unfair for the winemaker, like to say, when there's 50. I would say blood orange. Blood orange. I'm thinking plum. Blue, red, plum. Campari is a good call, but it's important to note that it's not screaming Campari. It's not like you're going to be putting this in, in the, you know, your your glass on the rocks. No, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, no. With, with it the just, twist it just of has, orange, it's just that, that little nut. It just has hints of it, and also like on the finish, uh, it has a really nice length. So there's a little bit of that uh, of that palate cleansing uh, component there. That Campari has a really nice lingering uh, note. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that's why I keep going back to that, that blood orange. There's some zest to it, and uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's really neat. Mm -hmm. Tannins are fine and long-lasting. And then the finish really savory. So the, for me, the fruit's kind of like going away, but um, the uh, the spice and the earth 
and sort of that then that blood orange zest mm. you know keeps on going 30 seconds later yeah it's still there yeah <laughs> the 2016 uh, Montecillo uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. So it's 100% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from uh, Montecillo. And Montecillo is uh, part of the Historical Vineyard Society, a um, nonprofit uh, website and group that catalogs uh, old historic uh, vineyards in California. So it's planted in 1964, head trained, a dry farmed, and just a, a real uh, jewel in, uh, of uh, California viticulture history. And how do you get to Montecito Vineyard from here? From here, probably the easiest way is go uh, Trinity Road, go over to Sonoma County, mm -hmm. and uh, go into Highway 12, and then turn on Nuns Canyon Road. And Nuns okay. Canyon Road, uh, um, if you're off on Nelligan, and mm -hmm. Nelligan Road uh, just uh, weaves all the way up um, what is the Sonoma side of, uh, of, of Mount Vida. Right. And this starts at around 1,600 foot elevation. It's a uh, old school terraced uh, vine uh, planting. Mm -hmm. So it starts around 1600, it's about 10 acre uh, parcel of old vines, mm -hmm. and it goes about 1800 foot. How did you find Montecillo Vineyard? So through uh, uh, Chewy Ordaz. So uh, inspirational wine grower, Nyers uh, and I have been working with Chewy for several years. A really interesting story. So he's been farming in Sonoma County for about 50 years, mm -hmm. and he's been farming this uh, vineyard for about 40. And the Lee family are the uh, are the owners, and the Lees, Mike Lee, Karen Lee, and uh, John Sheila started uh, Kenwood Winery in the early '70s. Mm -hmm. And this vineyard was the uh, one of their uh, uh, backbones of uh, of the Kenwood Old Artist uh, series uh, uh, wines from the '70s and, uh, and '80s. Mm -hmm. When the Lees and the Sheila sold uh, uh, Kenwood Winery, the uh, the Lees bought uh, uh, bought the vineyard. And there's that 10 acre parcel of old vines, or some older, sorry, there's a larger parcel of Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, Zinfandel that goes to St. Francis. St. Francis wanted to tear out the old vines, it wasn't given the production they wanted. Mm -hmm. So uh, Chewy almost went uh, Berkeley style and chained himself to the uh, old vines. And he said, You can't tear this out, let me find uh, some uh, 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 winemakers that'll, that'll pay a decent price uh, per ton. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the fortunate few that he called. Wow. So uh, awesome. he invited me in with open arms to the to the family. So yeah. it's uh, it's it's really amazing to to work with the vineyard. Um, every time I, I go up there, it's a, it's a real inspiration. So mm -hmm. um, and was the Montecito Cab the first grapes you picked for Camino? Did it launch? Twenty twelve was the first year, and it was both Montecito Cabernet and the Sobrana Chardonnay. Oh. So uh, it had had a white and a red. Nice. Well, this is the sixteen. It is. Um, drinking fruitier than the previous vintages of the Camino Cabernet to me. I think the, uh, the structure is a little bit softer in, uh, in 16. I think it's still showing a little bit of that uh, uh, mountain uh, character and the uh, aromas and the, uh, and the flavor. But mm -hmm. the uh, structures, of the hands are a little bit, uh, a little bit softer, a little bit finer. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still some nice uh, length to it, but there have been uh, some vintages where the, the tannins are a little bit uh, sturdier. Right. And uh, it's a little bit softer, a little bit more open mm -hmm. uh, in, in the 16 vintage. Yeah. It's a mouthful. I mean, it's really delicious right now. Good. I think so, too. Yeah. 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 I think it's uh, really delicious now. Uh, I think there's a lot of character there, fruit, the freshness, and even the tannins, even though they're a little bit softer, mm -hmm. they're there, they're long. Uh, so this, this can certainly, uh, certainly age. Great. I still remember with the 12 uh, vintage, you asked if I did any magnums. And I was kind of hesitant because I only did magnums really for myself. Right. And then uh, you, uh, you, you pulled on my emotional strings when you said you wanted some magnums for your, uh, it was your daughter's birthday. Yeah, it's birthday or wine. Yeah. 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 How's the uh, 12 drinking these days? The 12 is really good. Okay. I okay. had it uh, late last year. All right. Um, I'm, I'm down to uh, not, not many bottles, but. Um, Will it make it to terrific. her 21st birthday? Oh, absolutely. Well, well no, Mom. I'm going to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> When she's 16. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, it depends. Um, this is really delicious. So uh, thank you for offering this to Flavor Mountain as a pre-release. That'll be super fun. Yeah, terrific. I'm really excited to have uh, Flavor Mountain get a, uh, a sneak preview of, uh, of the Cabernet. So nice. You, you've been a fan since day one. So appreciate it. Good.